right where they're at. Uh, so, got a lot of things coming up. We're, we're really excited about it. I'm going to continue the series today, uh, Leaving a Legacy. And uh, uh, this will be the last uh, message that I preach in this. And uh, next week, we're going to talk about the man, the myth, the legend. Jesus Christ, and uh, I think we're going to have a good time. I uh, uh, want to uh, give a plug, quick plug right here. I don't know if Kevin's in here. Oh, he's in the back. Kevin, life happens how? Life happens in circles, not rolls. He's, he's hurting pretty bad this morning. His dad worked him too hard this week. And, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, life happens in circles, not rolls. What's that mean? That means this. That means that we want you to get involved in a life group. Uh, they're, they're fun. You can be, it gets more intimate. You can do more things when you're in circles and not roles. We want you also to find a place to serve. Uh, each one, reach one. That's been our push this year. Uh, our new shirts will be in in a couple weeks. They say Sunday plus one, Legacy Church. Uh, we want you to get involved, uh, not just Sunday, but plus one. Get in a life group somewhere, get involved, and we believe that you're going to have a good time. Again, next Sunday, 9 and 11. Service times will be different. We'll send out one calls to everybody. 9 and 11 next week, we will be receiving a special one-time offering uh, next Sunday in both of those services. I hope you've been preparing for this. We've been talking about it for about six weeks now. This is going to plant a new campus for this church. Uh, we're looking at a different town about uh, uh, putting a new campus church somewhere and uh, putting one of our young ministers in there to... Uh, I uh, kind of oversee the operations of it. So uh, uh, we've, we've got permission from the Church of God to do that, and we're really excited that we're going to be able to reach out a little bit. Uh, I want to uh, thank God for the place that he has taken us to. Amen? Thank God for the place that he has taken us to. Thank God for the people who have paved the way for us to be where we are today. And thank you, God, for the people that handed the baton down to us for us to run with it. Amen? Thank God for the old timers that have, that have gave us what we have today. Amen. Our kids, however, our kids deserve the very best that we can give to them now. Our kids deserve the very best that we can give to them. If I could just stop here and say this, uh, Sister Kathleen Doyle, we are praying for you and Brian. Uh, uh, he had major, major surgery, and uh, uh, he did not get to come home uh, as soon as they hope. He's probably still there, isn't he? Yeah, uh, having excruciating pain, uh, and we want to remember him in prayer. Also, Brother Katzman uh, had major surgery this week, the exact identical surgery, and he's in Plano, and he was supposed to come home, and he's still there too. Is he on his way home right now? Uh, so uh, keep them guys in prayer. They've, they've just had a lot, of, uh, a lot of pain involved with this surgery. So our, our kids deserve us handing them what has been handed to us, and it deserves to be handed down in better condition than what we received it. Can somebody say amen? There are a lot of things that we can leave someone when we talk about leaving a legacy. There's lots of things that we can leave. Uh, some people leave money. Uh, I told my dad the other day, he said, when I die, here's what I want you to, I uh, want you, you're going to get this, it's in the will, and this is, and I was like, I really don't want to talk about what's in your will, Pop. I said, but how much money am I going to get? <laughs> and I kind of played it off that way. But some people, they have a, a nest egg built up that they're going to leave their family. Uh, me and my wife have decided we're going to spend it all. <laughs> we're not leaving them nothing. They can work as hard as we did. I'm just kidding. We didn't, we ain't doing that. Some people leave, uh, leave property. When my, when my Papa died, he left my parents a bunch of property out in New Mexico. Some people have valuable uh, possessions. Some people, uh, when they die, they leave some direction for, for their family. Some people, when they die, we can just get a little more personal. Some people, they leave some moral integrity that will never be forgotten. Come on, somebody, amen. There is so much <clears throat> in the way of what we can leave or hand down uh, when we are gone. But today, I want to talk about the one thing that matters, and it's really the only thing that matters that we can hand down. Maybe I can say the most important thing that we could ever leave, the big picture, the thing we did, we gave, uh, that we gave our lives for when we are dead and gone, the big picture, the thing that we can leave. Let's talk about eternity today. Let's talk about eternity. What happens after we are gone from this place? What happens after we are gone from this place? This is gonna be a very basic, simple message this is where I felt like I was supposed to be today. Where will you spend eternity? We're talking about leaving a legacy. Where will you spend eternity? This is the thing that nobody likes to talk about, and it very rarely ever does get talked about anymore, except at funerals. We believe, we believe, our church, our denomination, the Bible teaches, Christians believe in a literal heaven that God is preparing for you and I right now. Can somebody say amen? 
The Bible said he's sitting at the right hand of the Father and he's ever making intercession for us and he is building a kingdom for us right now in heaven. Amen? I believe in a literal heaven, and I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute, but the Bible also says that there is a literal place called hell. Yeah, it's not just we die, we close our eyes, and that's the end of it. Uh, there is a little literal place called hell. Heaven is not the place where only the perfect people in this world can go. <gasps> Pastor. Heaven is not the place where only the perfect people go. As a matter of fact, I'd like to tell you that there will be good people in hell that just never accepted Christ into their lives. Mm -hmm. Amen. There will be messed up people that love God and repented of sin and tried every day to live for him in heaven. Not perfect people because there's only been one perfect person that has ever walked the face of the earth. Come on, somebody. And his name is Jesus. But people who have taken advantage of God's grace on their lives, the people who have repented and asked them, asked Jesus into their lives, those are the people who get heaven. They don't have to be perfect. They just have to be right with God. Amen? Jesus is the key. Come on. Jesus is the key to heaven in our lives. He isn't a way. He is the way. Come on. There is not a bunch of ways to get to the Father. There is only one way and only one name under heaven whereby man can be saved, and that is the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The point I'm making to you today is this, that when you and I take our last breath and we enter into eternity, where will you spend eternity? Talking about leaving a legacy. Let's talk about heaven for just a minute. Everybody likes heaven. Look at your neighbor and say, I like heaven. Let's talk about heaven. Amen. One little boy asked his grandfather, he says, Papa, what's heaven going to be like? And Grandpa began to tell him, this is, son, what I think heaven's going to be like. And he said, well, grandson, he said, tell me, what do you think heaven's going to be like? He says, I think heaven's going to be like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Hallelujah. Amen. Something he really loved. The Bible says in heaven there will be no more death. Has anybody experienced death before? You've experienced lo losing loved ones, and it has been a traumatic experience in your life. The Bible said in heaven there will be no more death, there will be no more sadness, there will be no more sorrow. The Bible says in heaven there are going to be gates of pearl. Now, i got to tell you, that's a big clam. Amen. That's got to be one Mac Daddy of a clam on steroids right there. Amen. Gates of pearl. The Bible says in heaven there will be streets of transparent gold and a crystal sea. I can't wait to see what kind of fish are in that lake. Amen. Heaven will be a place where there is nonstop worship. Come on, somebody. Heaven is a place where there is going to be nonstop worship. I just want to go ahead and throw a plug in. The next series that I'm going to start after Easter is going to be a series on worship. Why? Somebody say why because we've gotten awful quiet around here. Amen. It seems like we forgot why we're here. We are here to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who saved us from a devil's hell. Amen. I was on my way there. I was going as fast as I could, but Jesus came down, moved into my life. He shoveled out the old and he brought a brand new way. And because of that, I am no longer going to a devil's hell, but I am going to heaven. And we used to sing it the old time way. I'm on my way to heaven and I'm so glad. And the devil can't do me no no harm. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I love heaven. Amen? Heaven is going to be a place of nonstop worship. So if you can't worship here, you probably won't like it there. Amen. In heaven, there will be a place, that, that is a place where there is going to be joy unspeakable. Joy unspeakable. Amen. Makes me want to sing the old hymn. In heaven, there will be no need for the S-U-N, the sun, because the S-O-N will be the light of that four-squared city. I can't wait to see heaven one day. In heaven, you will never wake up with zits on your face or morning breath. I am 48 years old, got up the other morning, had a zit right between my eyeballs. I looked at that thing, got ready to comb my hair, and said, the devil is a lie. Right there in the morning, first thing, 48 years old, going through puberty. Something's wrong with me. Amen. In heaven, you ain't going to wake up. I'm sorry, I just preach it the way it comes, okay? Amen. In heaven, you're not going to wake up with zits. You're not going to wake up with morning breath. And ladies, you will never have a week where you retain water. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. By the way, I'm doing that today. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the Bible says about heaven that eyes have not seen and our ears have never heard and neither have we even been able, we have been able to comprehend or discern the things that God has in store for the people that are looking and waiting for his appearance. 
Oh, can I tell you one of the best things that I love in this life is when I go to Cracker Barrel and they bring me a chicken fried steak smothered in brown gravy and onions. <laughs> Whoa, it makes me feel so good, Sister Amy. I just want to speak in tongues thinking about chicken fried steak right now. My stomach's going, mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and the Bible says that in heaven, their eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. So what that means to me is this, that there's going to be chicken fried steak all over the place. Hallelujah. My mansion's going to come catered in. Amen. Heaven is going to be a great place. Amen. Heaven's going to be a great place. The Gaithers, excuse me, young folks, used to sing this old song. This is home where there is no night. Home where the sun is the light. The place that I've been dreaming of so long. My loved ones there, they will welcome me. But his sweet face will be the first I see. And when this journey's over, I am going home. Can't wait to get to heaven, amen? Can't wait to get to heaven. Can't wait to get to heaven. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I can't wait to get to heaven. Can't wait to get there. <laughs> now, not only does the Bible teach us that there's a literal heaven, but the Bible tells us that there's another place too. Wouldn't be a very good preacher if I didn't tell both sides, right? We'd be like CNN and MSNBC only tell one side of the story. Mm -hmm, yeah, amen. Yeah, let's just go ahead and tell both sides of the story here, sorry. Uh, hell, on the other hand, the word says, is the place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Think about that. Hell is the place where the Bible says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, pastor, it'll be a few minutes of pain and it'll be all over with, and that's not what the Bible says. The Bible said not only will there be weeping and gnashing of teeth, the Bible says it's a place where the worm doesn't die and the fire is never quenched. So let me explain that to you. When he says the worm doesn't die on your body right now, your body is constantly regenerating itself. Your skin is always producing new skin. If you take your hand sometimes and you do this, we put moisturizer on it so it doesn't look so bad and your skin will fall off. That's because on your body there are skin worms. Mm -hmm. Every person in the world has them. It's just the way it is. And your body is always regenerating new stuff. Amen. The Bible says in hell... The worm will not die, so that means you're going to have a physical body that will burn in pain forever, and the, choir is not, uh, the fire is not quenched. It kind of puts a new light on it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, it also says uh, uh, that uh, in hell, there are every filthy, nasty, horrible human being that has committed every rape and murder, those people uh, that have not repented, uh, those people with ill intent and those people that would like to do you harm and anything uh, that you can imagine that would be filthy, nasty, and, and, and perverted, those people will be there uh, and they, that's who you'll get to fellowship with. The Bible also teaches us that hell is a place of isolation and it's a place of loneliness, a place where people cry out for help but help never comes. It's a place where people cry for help but help never comes. A place uh, a place where wants will never be fulfilled. And hear me today, heaven and hell, these are two real places. That's what the Bible teaches us. They are two real places. When we die, can I say this to you? It's heaven or hell. There is no in-between. It's either heaven or hell. We've got to choose, right? Right? It's heaven or hell. It's either hot or cold. Come on, amen? It's either the heater or the AC. Come on, amen? Amen? Uh, uh, listen, not only uh, will we spend eternity in one of those two places, but everyone, think about this, everyone, not just you, not just me, but everyone will we spend eternity in this world, anybody who has died previously, everybody who will come after us, everybody will spend eternity in one of those two places. The fact is that God sent his son to redeem us when he died on a cross. He created a legacy. He created a legacy that we can all joy and that we can all take advantage of. We don't deserve it, though. <laughs> we don't deserve it. Nobody in here does, if you really think about what Jesus did, what God sent his son to do for us. Nobody in here really deserves what he did. I have stolen. I remember going to the store when I was a little kid. We had a Piggly Wiggly right down the road. How many of y'all remember Piggly Wigglies? You go to Georgia where my wife is from, and they still have Piggly Wigglies. I had to stop at one last time we were there just to walk through it to bring back the old memories. How many of y'all remember TG and Y? Anybody remember that? I didn't know if they had those in Texas. We... We used to live down the road from the Piggly Wiggly, and I was about eight or nine years old, Bob, and I'd back up to the, you know, the, the baseball cards. I'd back up to over there, and I'd take it, and I'd just rip the package open and pull that piece of gum out, you know, that pink 
cardboard thing you put in your mouth and after you get enough slobber on it, it finally goes from cardboard to gum. It was the nastiest stuff you've ever had in your life and, and you would spit it out after about three minutes, but it was the big deal, the bubble gum stick. I remember stealing a couple of those, bless God. It's all right, Piggly Wiggly, come get me. Go ahead. Amen. It's been a long time ago. <laughs> Amen. None of us deserve God's grace. Amen. None of us deserve God's grace. Pastor, that's silly. You stole a stick of gum when you were eight. Yeah, but how many people steal time from their boss? Yeah, I've told some lies. Amen. I've told some lies. Amen. I've abused myself over the years. I, I, here's a good one. I, I've gossiped. Come on, anybody else? Amen. I saw footprints there. I mean, amen. Somebody was there before I ever got there. Uh, uh, don't, don't look at me that way. You gossip too, and you've lied, and you've done some things too. Amen. We all deserve uh, a dead trip south. Amen. We all deserve a dead end trip to the south when we die. But Jesus lived and died, so we didn't have to. And God sent him here to create for you and I a better way and for us to live the legacy of life eternal. Amen. It's the big picture. It's the one thing we leave to our family and our kids and our grandkids that really matters. And I'm so glad that we are a church that doesn't look down on people who have made mistakes and that have blown it over the years. I'm so glad that we are a church full of messed up people. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I'd be messed up. Go ahead, tell them, I, I was messed up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't brag about it now. Just let them know that I was there too. Amen. Amen. Are there any perfect people in this church today? Anybody perfect in here? Anybody? Uh, uh, Carrie Whaley says that her husband is perfect. She was pointing at him. I was trying to help you there. I was trying to help you there, okay? <laughs> Romans 3.23. Romans 3.23, Paul said this, everybody has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Everybody has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That means you don't have to hang your head because everybody has been where you are. Everybody has been where you have been. Everybody has been where I am. The key to our legacy is Jesus. Somebody say, the key is Jesus. Let me say it this way. He is the way. He is not a way. He is the way. He is the only way. Jesus came to this earth, come on, to leave us something that would forever change the direction of this world and, in, 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 and impact our individual lives. It's not money. He didn't leave us money. He didn't leave us prestige or power. All that is going to fade away one day. What God left us through his son, Jesus Christ, is here now, and it will be here long after we are gone. And it is the legacy of eternal life if we choose to take part of it. Come on, somebody, amen. The legacy of Jesus is something that money can't buy and philosophy cannot explain it away. It doesn't make any sense. It is the peace that passes all understanding. It is the peace that passes all understanding. John 14, verse number six, Jesus said unto him, I am the way. I am the way. I am the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said, I am the way. Jesus is the access point to the Father. He is the access point to the Father. He is the only way to God. He is the only way to God. Come on, somebody. It's not our works, lest anybody should be boasting or bragging. It's not our works. It's not our good deeds or kind words. Our money, our church attendance, and those things are good. Our victory is in the legacy of Jesus Christ. Listen, it's all about him. Amen. It's all about him. Religion is man's attempt to get to God. Religion is man's attempt to get to God, but Jesus is God's way to get to man. Come on, amen. The legacy of God has, uh, uh, the, the legacy that God has for us isn't religion, it is a relationship. I'm sending my son to this earth to find a way to get into your life. I have sent my son to this earth to find a way to get into your marriage. I sent my son to this earth to find a way to get into those addictions that you are bound with through your dysfunction. We can't buy our way out of trouble. We can't buy our way out of confusion. You can't find the answer in the bottom of a bottle. There is only one way to walk in total peace and victory and his name is Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 So I told you it's a very simple message today. Amen. Listen, to inherit the legacy you don't have to quit doing anything. To inherit the legacy of Jesus Christ you don't have to quit doing anything. Oh, do I get in big disagreements with my fundamental religious old-timers right here. 
People say all the time, well, I'll come and get saved when I can finally quit dipping, when I can quit smoking, when I can quit drinking. Then I'll change. I just want you to know something. You don't have to quit dipping to come to Jesus. You don't have to quit drinking to come to Jesus. You don't have to quit smoking to come to Jesus. All you have, that is religion. Come on. That is man's way to get to God. God said you don't have to do any of that. All we have to do is ask him into our hearts. Acknowledge that he is the son of God, that he died, but three days later he arose. He arose. Hallelujah. God arose. Amen. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Oh, I feel like singing. Tell your neighbor, you don't have to clean up anybody. You don't have to get cleaned up. Tell them, you don't have to clean anybody up to get them here. Romans 5 and 8. But God demonstrates his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. While I was in a bar, he died for me. While I was doing things that were uncalled for and ungodly, he still sent his son to die for me. All right, so last week I told you about My wife and I, in Michigan, on a (laughs) back road, looking for a road to get to this prison, not because I was going there, but because uh, I I wanted to visit one of my uh, church members who got put in there for back child support. So I was riding down these back country roads and ran on this, (laughs) right across this lady, and she was dressed kind of silly, and uh, she had like one tooth in her mouth. And uh, I said, if I go down that road right there, I said, can I get to this particular place and she smiled at me with that one tooth so proud (laughs) and and she said you see that sign right there right next to her there was a sign that said dead end she said you go down that road but you ain't gonna get no worse (laughs) I just rolled my window up kept driving and my wife was laughing at me I said don't I look like a dummy (laughs) my lady had one tooth and she's laughing at me that don't say much about me, does it? Anyways, so last week I told you about, uh, about that. She looked at me and said, that road ain't going to get you anywhere. I'm wondering in our lives, with everybody that is represented today, how many people have spent times on dead-end roads? I'm just wondering how many people that are in here today, you've spent some time on some dead-end roads. Come on, somebody, are you here? I'm wondering in our lives, uh, in our lives, with everybody that is represented today, how many have spent some time on dead-end roads and have wasted a lot of time? Anybody ever in here ever went out on a date before? Is it hot in here to anybody other than me? Can, can we get an usher to turn the AC like to 69 or something? If it gets too cold, we'll turn it back up like half a degree for you skinny people. So let's talk real quick, okay? Uh, dead end roads. Anybody ever uh, went on a date uh, before and you thought on your first date, they're the one. That's my future right there. Anybody ever been there before? Come on, wave at me. You been there before? Oh, man, they're the one. Oh, yeah, buddy. And then you go on a couple more dates, and a month passes. And then two months pass. And then you go, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe that was wrong. In other words, you say, dead end, right? <laughs> dead end. I had a friend who wanted me to get involved with this thing. It was like Amway. <laughs> pastor, Pastor John, he, and he's a pastor too in the state of Florida. He said, if you give me $50, there's this new deal that's going on. Pastor John, you've got to get involved with this. It's all, I love this. It's all run by Christians. No, they, aren't they all? <laughs> Amen. It's all run by Christians, and we're going to get in on the ground floor. And they said, if we sign up and we can get 75 other people to sign up, if you'll give me $50, he said, I'm telling you, I can get you signed up, but we're on the ground floor, and this is going to be awesome. Always is always is. My response was very polite because I love him and respect him as my elder in the Lord. I said, brother, if you need $50, I'll just send you a check for $50, but I don't want to be involved in no more of this stuff. All they do is fill up my junk mail. Hello? Amen. I asked him the other day, that was about three months ago, I asked him the other day, I said, so how's that little deal going with this thing that we're, he said, yeah, I found out that was a scam. I said, yep, dead end. Dead end. Had another friend uh, uh, I know that was telling me about these fat pills that are guaranteed to work. Now, why would you call me to tell me about your fat pills? First of all, what are you trying to say to me? Okay? I'd have drive where you're at and punch you right in your eyeball. Amen. Call me and say, hey, bro, uh, Brother John, i got to tell you about these fat pills. They're guaranteed to work. They'll help you lose weight. Now, listen to this. He said, these were his words, and I, I wrote it down when he said, you don't have to exercise, and you don't even have to watch what you eat. Wow. 
<laughs> I'm taking a class right now online. I take this class, and, and it's a church growth thing, and they said replace the how every time you're in leadership. When people say we want to do this, instead of saying how, say wow. Because how limits their idea and it caps off their future and it makes them think that you, you don't have any ideas or you are throwing a negative uh, uh, connotation in everything idea they have. So he said, quit saying how. And he said, say wow. And he said, he said, you don't have to exercise and you can eat anything you want. Just take the pill and the fat falls off. And I went, whoa. <laughs> that doesn't even make, a sin, make any sense with the anatomy of the human body. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen. I said, dead end. <laughs> <laughs> if, 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 if I could just make more money, if I could just make more money, dead end. Listen, Carlos, right here. If, if I could just find the right church that preached the right kind of word, that didn't step on my toes, that didn't convict me, and didn't require anything from me, but just made me feel good, just says all the right things, and I don't have to do anything, if I could just find that, that would be perfect. Dead end. Come on, somebody. Hey, to, to all my friends, I found it. I found it. Come, come, come with me. All I have to do is attend from 11 to 12 on Sundays. I don't have to serve. I don't have to get involved. I don't have to change anything about myself. I don't have to stop doing anything. I don't have to start doing anything. I, don't, I can just continue to live the way I've always lived. I, I just keep doing what I've always done. And then when the new wears off a year later and everything has passed by and everything has gotten worse in the life, as a matter of fact, nothing has changed but gotten 10 times worse than what it was. Come on, somebody. Are you here? what I'm saying dead end dead end road come on amen can I just say this I am so sick of this new powerless pseudo Christianity that is floating around today if the way I'm living is doing me no good then what difference is it going to make if I go to a church where there's some coward in the pulpit that is afraid to stand up and tell me what the word of God says and says you need to make some changes in the way you think act and walk We must understand that the only way to get off the dead end road is to turn around and go a new direction, taking a shower and then rolling in the mud. Come on, somebody. Taking a shower and rolling in the mud. Going to the gym and getting your burn on. I see it on everybody's Facebook. And then going to Brahms right after. Uh-huh, amen. Trying to serve God and acting like the world. Going to the gym and eating ice cream. Taking a shower and rolling in the mud will produce nothing but depression and drama in every believer's life. Come on, somebody. Amen. We need to be a church that is every day pointing souls to Calvary. Every day telling people that there is victory for the Christian who walks the narrow way. We need to be the people that have the answer to the dead end in people's lives. Amen. It's not seven steps to a better you. It's not being purposed driven. It's kneeling and surrendering our lives to him. It is casting our cares for him because he cares for us. It is not found in the bottom of a bottle. It is found on our knees looking up saying, Lord, I need you. I tried everything and I need you. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way. And then he says this. He said, I am the truth. I am the truth. John 14 verse number 6. Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Listen, we live in a day where everything is a lie just about. Amen? Yeah. Politicians, the news, who even really knows what to believe anymore? I mean, I honest to God don't even know what to believe anymore. People lie so much. Uh, uh, the news, uh, you can turn it on one, they say this, turn it on another, they say this, and nobody really knows what the truth is. It's just somebody's slant on whatever is going on currently. Somebody's tweet on whatever is going on currently. It's so bad that people don't even trust the church anymore. It's gotten so bad people don't even trust the church anymore. It's gotten so bad that people don't trust pastors anymore. I have to tell you, I, I, I'm not going to argue that. Uh, there, there's a lot that's happened that would make us not want to trust the church anymore. There's a lot that's happened that makes us doubt what's real and what's, what's not real. One thing I can tell you is this, the word rightly divided is always the truth. 
The word rightly divided is always the truth. It, it, uh, it, it discerns the difference between right and wrong. The truth of the word will always expose the lie of the enemy. Some folks in here, your dead ends have caused you so much pain and so much emptiness. Some folks in here, your dead ends have caused you shame and they've caused you loneliness. But can I shed some light from the word on your life real quick? Here's some light of the word for somebody in here today. Listen, everybody else that lies, things that you can't figure out what's the truth, the word is always the truth. Listen to this. Matthew 11 verse 28. This is the truth that you can always depend on. It's written in the red letters. I love it. It says come unto me all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your soul. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. That is a truth that we can always depend on. Can somebody say amen? Psalms 139 verse 14, David said, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. That is a truth that you can depend on. Come on somebody, are you here today? Can I give you another one? Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet to the nations. Can I keep going this morning and give you some truths from the word? Your legacy is found in the name of Jesus Christ. Your legacy is found in the finished work of the blood and the cross of Calvary. He said, in him you live, in him you move, and in him we have our being. He said, oh, taste and and see that the Lord is good. Can I tell you that you are more than a label? You are more than criticism. You are more than what the skeptics and hypocrites say about you. You are who the I am says you are. Amen. You are an heir to the throne. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You are an overcomer and you are more than a conqueror. I'm telling you today in this place that God isn't through with you. He is the truth because you have made some poor decisions. He's not through with you because because you've done something crazy. He's not through with you. God looks at you and says, I still see somebody that I would die for again. Yeah, amen. He still sees you as chosen. He still sees you as called. He still looks at you and sees you as set apart. He still looks at you and says, you are anointed. Maybe others have seen what you have done and have labeled you as a hypocrite. Maybe others have labeled you as a loser. Maybe others have uh, labeled you as a drunk or a junkie or even they call some a, a hoe. But Jesus looks at our brokenness and our humanistic nature and says, I got this. I got this. Amen. You're not too dirty. You're not too dirty. There is nothing too dirty that he can't make worthy. Amen. God looks at you and says, there is nothing you have done that I can't wash off you. There is nothing you've ever gotten into that I can't make clean. There is no place you have ever been and brought shame on your family and yourself that I can't look at you and start over and put you back on the block and start molding and fashioning you after my likeness. There is nothing you can do that I can't fix in your life. God looks at you and says, hey, bro, I got this. I got this. Amen. <laughs> I got this. Amen. Hear me, legacy. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. Revelations 12 and 2. I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of the brethren who has accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Don't listen to the lie of the enemy, the accuser of the brethren. He's been cast down. He is the way. Somebody say, he is the way. Say it again. He is the way. Come on, say it one more time. Tap somebody on the shoulder uh, next to you. Tell them, excuse me, but we serve the way. Amen. He is the way. Now look at him and tell him, he is the truth. He is the truth. Amen. Now, let me try to close here. I said try. Don't get upset with me. I said try. He is the life. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. What if I told you that church isn't the life? <laughs> yeah. What if I told you that fellowship isn't the life? What if I made the statement that a lot of folks don't even truly understand what Jesus is saying when he says he is the life? Some folks 
are living a washed up, watered down version of life in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I have to be very honest with you for the next few minutes. There are many people who are saved that deep down that are just trying to survive their life and they hate their tomorrows and they don't want to get up and go to work. There are some folks that are trying to endure in a marriage that God had planned for you to enjoy. Mm -hmm. You don't know what life in Jesus is all about. I know a lot of Jesus followers that don't have any joy in their lives and absolutely loathe their own life right now. And some attend this church. There are several reasons this happens. There are several reasons this happens to people, that they don't understand what life is. There are several reasons. I don't want to touch just a couple this morning. I'm winding down, and I'm just being honest. Some folks have only enough of Jesus in them to get by and live miserable because they know they have been called for more. They know they have been called higher, but because of people, because of family, because of friends, because of laziness, because of complacency, they just stay right where they're at. I'm good right here. Don't need any more, don't want any more. Just enough of Jesus to make themselves and everybody around them miserable. Uh-huh. Just enough of Jesus to make themselves and everybody around them absolutely miserable. Some folks are so stuck in religion. If I just show up, if I just, if I just show up, it's all good. Yeah, there's more to it than just showing up. Listen, when we fall in love with the man, Jesus Christ, if you can ever fall in love with the man, Jesus Christ, I mean fall in love with him. Love what he loves. Walk away from what he turns his back on. Don't make excuses for it because your family does it. You know, you've criticized everybody else over the years, but your family does it, so now it's okay. Fall in love with what he loves. Stay away from the things he doesn't love. The Bible does say avoid the very appearance. That doesn't mean to stick your head in the sand. It means to pray, but don't get involved in that mess. Come on, somebody. Amen? Spend time with him. Spend some time with him. Love what he loves. Spend some time with him. And I guarantee you, some folks' depression would lift. You don't need 85 pills. Turn your TV off. Stay off Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Shut that junk off and pull your word out and read the word and talk to God. And I'm telling you, you don't need 13 pills and three psychologists. What am I going to do? Some people create their storm and then complain because it's raining. I can't hear from God. Well, no wonder you can't hear from God. The only time you talk to him is between 10 and 12 on Sunday. It got quiet in this graveyard church. Most folks, when they need something... Do you know that God doesn't give you what you're not ready for? If I had time to open this up, maybe I'll do it later. Some people are praying for stuff, and they're not ready for it, and God's going, you ask amiss. God does not pour out what you can't contain. He does not pour out what you're not ready for. Amen? Pray for God to use me more. Pray for me, but you won't shut anything off and give God some time. Pray that God will use me to do this, but you spend more time... You have to invest in yourself. Come on, somebody. Faith without works is, yeah, amen. You have to stay committed long enough to find life in Jesus. Amen. I don't want, uh, uh, I don't want the legacy I leave this world, uh, uh, that, that I leave uh, this world with. I don't want it to be a broken down life or a dysfunctional life. I want it to be life and life abundantly. That's what I want to leave. Don't be a hater. 
Come on, don't be a hater. But listen, I know I couldn't afford that house. I know I can't afford what I've got. I know there were others that were more qualified. I know it's grown way beyond what everybody thought. I know there are some that are hating what God is doing for you. But in here, hear me today. He is the way. He is the only way things like that are happening for you. He is the truth and he is the life. I'm living the dream and creating a legacy for others that will read that legacy long after we're gone. Long after we're gone. John 12, 24, most most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Produces much. So Jesus is saying that my death is going to create new life. When you're gone, when I'm gone, what will I, what will my life scream? When you're gone, what will your life scream from the grave? What is my life going to scream from the grave when I'm gone from here? John 12, 25, watch this next verse. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Will you lift your hands? Will you just sing this song with me real quick? Just hold on just a second. I give myself away. I give myself away. I'm singing tenor. Give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Give myself away so you can use me. Give myself away. Give myself away so you can use me. Would you stand and sing that? Give myself away. Give myself so I just want to sing that part again. Give myself Give myself Would you lift your hands and just tell him, I give myself.
the way. He is not a way. He is the way. He is the truth. He is life. He is the life. I'm going to be sharing some things with you the week after Easter that are some of the most difficult things that the Lord has asked my wife and I to do. We're not getting divorced. We're not leaving the church. God wouldn't ask us to do that. The Lord ain't asking us to do that. People jump to conclusions. There are some things that we've been dealing with behind the scene that the Lord has asked my wife and I to do, and we have a way to change that if we would like to. But we know what the Lord's called us to do because He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the leader of my life. We've struggled to say yes to the Holy Spirit over this thing that we have coming up. We've been struggling to say yes this week in prayer. I finally, after several weeks of knowing what was coming, have felt peace in my spirit. The Lord began to confirm some things in my spirit. Ministry is lonely and it can be tough, but it's all about Him. It's all about Him. It's all about what He asks. When I leave this place, I want my life to scream. And I don't mean this church. When I leave this earth, when I leave this earth, I want my life to scream that He is a good and a faithful servant. And He did what I called Him to do. Can I tell you this? The best legacy we can leave when we leave is a legacy that won't leave. Can I say that again? The best legacy we can leave when we leave is a legacy that won't leave. Yeah, amen. This is why I'm so adamant about starting some campus churches in this area. We have to reach people. We have to reach people. Come on, somebody. I believe something. Uh, <laughs> I believe we have something and someone to offer people. This is why next Sunday we're going to be receiving a special offering on top of our tithe and offering, a, sep a, a separate offering, uh, because the best legacy we can leave when we leave is a legacy that won't leave. Come on, somebody. Amen. He will not, and he is not asking us anything too hard for us to do. He will always equip what he has called this church to do and what he's called you to do. Let's, let's be the next Brother Murphy. Let's be the next Brother Murphy that people talk about in 2018 in a good way that they remember what Brother Murphy did for this church. Let's be the next Brother Ellis that folks talk about. Some of you don't know who he is, but some of you in here are going, remember him. Let's be the next Brother Ellis that people talk about. We get up there and lead that choir and have, man, he get them people moving, had that little pencil in his hand. And let, 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 let's, let, let's be uh, 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 the next person that leaves a legacy here. Let our lives have such an impact that we are the Jonas that preach the message and change an entire nation. Let us be the Moses and watch the waters part when we pray. The Bible does say that he's not a respecter of person. Come on, somebody. Let them, when we leave here, let them say things like this. Hey, y'all remember when Brother Tolls and Bill Hamilton took up an offering on the stage one morning? Those old timers in their 80s, the Holy Ghost hit that place to buy the steeple and they danced and shouted all over the church. I hope they talk about us like that. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hey, y'all remember when the old timers moved into that legacy campus on 1420 Loop 11 and they had nothing for the kiddos to play with in children's church but one lady who had blonde hair who now has white hair? She took up an offering in the back for about six weeks and raised about $3,000 with pennies and paid for an entire place. I want them to talk that way about us when we're gone. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hey, y'all remember? Y'all remember that praise team when they were singing and the Holy Ghost hit that place and no preacher gave an altar call, but the altar's filled because the Holy Ghost gave the altar call. I want them to say those things about us. Hey, y'all remember that time we were, we were going to sell that daycare and the Lord spoke and said he had other plans and now here we are all these years later, them old timers back. You remember, what's that guy's name? Brother Gardner and some of them old timers back in, in the 2000s. They were here at Legacy. Remember that? And now today we have an outreach center that is still ministering to homeless people all over this side of town. I want them to talk that way about our church. I want them to talk that way about us. 
Hey, y'all remember that crippled lady who walked up on the stage that time for prayer with a walker and the Holy Ghost fell and she danced all over the church platform, went down the center aisle carrying her walker and walked out the back door. Come on, somebody. Y'all remember that little old crippled lady that taught the women's Bible study so faithfully every week? The last two years of her life, she did it from a wheelchair in the fellowship hall because nobody else wanted to. Y'all remember that? Sister Billy Tolls, amen. I want them to talk like that about us. Y'all remember when that Wichita Falls Church, that legacy church rallied the troops and took up an offering and put a new roof on the Albany Church that wasn't theirs and it's not their responsibility. And in the middle of giving about $8,000, they never missed a payment of their own. They never fell behind. The employees never missed a paycheck, but God provided for them supernaturally. Y'all remember when that happened? Yeah, I want people to say that about us. Hey, hey, y'all remember when that church at 1420 Loop 11, it, it sowed seed and received a special offering? That preacher talked about starting a campus church, and now here we are 25 years later over here in this town and this town, and because of what those people did, we are here today, and we are worshiping over here, and, and our families are saved that would have never drove over there, never went to it, but something got a hold of them, and they decided that they needed to do this, and now our entire families are changed. Come on, somebody, are you in here today? Hey, y'all, if it wasn't for that Legacy Church main campus sowing seed into this campus, we wouldn't be in this church here today in whatever town. But look what God did through them. My whole family is saved now because of them. I'm telling you, the Legacy Church. I'm telling you, Legacy, I have a weird feeling inside of me. I was telling a few people this morning in my office that the war and the fighting is about to cease and there is coming some victories in your lives and there is coming some breakthroughs in some of your lives and breakthroughs in this community and in your family. I feel the anointing and I feel power sneaking up through the streets of Wichita Falls and I feel like revival is about to bust loose all over this place. I feel like revival is about to bust loose all through this place. Maybe you're in here today to end. Maybe you're in here today. See, I closed my iPad. That means I'm going to stop. Maybe. Maybe you're in here today and you say, you know what, preacher? I love that he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And you started out talking about heaven. Man, that sounds like a place that I want to be. And then you started talking about hell and that scared me. And you know what, Pastor, I, I love God, I really do. I love Him with all my heart, but I really want to make sure that I'm all right with Him. I really want to make sure that I'm in line with Him. I really want to make sure that, that uh, He's the Lord of my life, not where I used to be. I know I'm not. I love Him, just not where I need to be. If you're in here today and you say, you know what, that's kind of where I'm at. I really want to make sure that He's the Lord of my life. Would you just slip your hand up, back down? bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Saw about three or four hands go up. Today, I want you to make one step further than what you just did. I want to ask you today if you'll grab the person by the hand next to you and say, would you go help me pray? As they come, and I'm believing that you will come, I'd like our prayer team to gather around this morning. And I'd like you to pray with these folks because I believe the greatest legacy we will ever leave is not a bigger building. I believe the biggest legacy we'll ever, we will ever leave is souls that are saved, lives that are changed. I've been private messaging a guy on Facebook that grew up in this church. I've been private messaging him for years now. And I've almost got him to promise me he's going to come to church next Sunday. I've almost got him to promise. He won't say I promised but I'm going to get him. The greatest legacy we can leave are souls that are saved. If you're in here today and you raised your hand, or maybe you're in here and you didn't raise your hand and you say, you know what, I really want to make sure that I'm all right. No judgment from anybody. No judgment from anybody. Ask somebody next to you, would you come with me? Would you come with me and pray? Come on. There were hands that went up. I'm going to leave this open just for a minute. Come on. It's only 11.50. We've got plenty of time. Come on. If you're in here today 
you know what? I just want to make sure. There were hands that went up. Come on. It's all right. You're saying to yourself, if one comes, I'll go. There were hands that went up. Come on. Come on. Obey the Lord. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on. I just need to make sure. they want. Please, please invite somebody to come with you next Sunday. I love y'all. God bless you. Please let these pray and fellowship out in the foyer.